So we transform this into this. Hi guys! And welcome to the show! My name is Dr. Rocker and today I will show you how to color your comic book drawing with the iPad using Procreate. I will tell you everything you need to know step by step. Make sure to watch the whole video to get all the information you need. And make sure to subscribe to this channel for all your favorite future comic book content. But now let's get right into the subject. To color a drawing, we need a drawing. So let's do that real quick. Step 1. Drawing. Usually I show you more of the drawing part, but today's video is all about coloring with the iPad. So, how do we get this into this? Step 2. Getting a drawing on the iPad. The easiest way would be to take a photo with the iPad. Make sure that there is no hard light source. Now you adjust the brightness, turn up the contrast as much as possible, and with this tool right here, you cut it down to the right size. This will provide you with a very good black and white image for coloring. If you should own a scanner, scan the drawing with 300 dots per inch, set it to black line drawing and the easiest way to get it on the iPad, send it to yourself via email. Then we open up Procreate, click photo, choose the right one and voila, that pool is in the iPad. And now we will get to one of the most important things of today's video. Step 3. Preparing your drawing for coloring. When you would do the line drawing on Procreate and not traditionally, you would just have to put the coloring layers beneath the line work layer and you would be ready to go. But since this is from a drawing from an actual piece of paper, we need to do some adjustments to coloring this thing without touching the line work. For this, we tap on layers. As you can see, there's only the one layer. It's on N, which means normal. We tip that and we go all up till we have multiply and then when we set it to multiply, add a new layer, move the layer beneath layer 1 and now we can color this thing without touching the line work. This way you can also color drawings and pencils, even with shadings like I did in this video. Ok people, now we are ready to start with this one, the apple pencil. Step 4. Flatten your drawing. Flattening means to define the base colors of a drawing. No shadows or anything, just a base color. Therefore we will use this tool. When you click it, you will get the whole toolbar. And we will use the freehand selecting tool. You could also use the automatic one, but only if your drawing doesn't have any gaps like mine does here and here. But since my drawing is very loose, I will have to use this one. What we want to achieve here is to divide our character from the background. And it goes like this. You can start anywhere you want and follow the outline of your character. You can stop in between, zoom in so it's easier and then just continue with the line. You can also just tab it and the line will connect itself. You don't have to be careful at the black areas because they will hide the colors anyway. And when you make a mistake like this, you just do a two finger tap and it's undone. And then you just continue from the last checkpoint. So don't make too long lines because when you make a mistake at the end of the line and you want to undo it, the whole line will be gone again. This is the most boring part of the coloring process and also the reason why most colorists, professional colorists, have a flattener. A guy or a girl who does all those base colors for them. The good thing is you only have to do the whole character like this once. This is so boring! Why don't I have a flatter? And when you're done, you just connect it with the connection point. Now we have a mask all around that pool. Which means we make sure that we are using a layer beneath our line work. Then we choose the right base color and drag it on that pool. And now we can already get rid of the mask, create a next layer, tip on the layer and go on clipping mask. That's very important, because now everything we will draw on this layer will stick to this one. I'll show you. Let's just use another color. And when I use my brush now, you can see it only affects the clipped area. Which means if you would like to add a shadow right here, you wouldn't have to be concerned about the background. But more about that later, because now we will add a next layer. Use the selecting tool again this one and define the area for the next flat color. 
which in this case is all the dark parts from that pool. Not as much work as before, but still pretty boring. As you can see, I'm done with the first area, but I will not color this area yet. I will define the next one with the selecting tool right away and I can color them all at once when I'm done. Where's your flatter when you need one? Next area. If you have defined all the areas, you can either drag and drop the color onto the area or you just take the biggest brush you can find and color everything at once, which is the more satisfying way to do that. And just like that, you create a layer for every base color on your drawing. As you can see guys, I'm done with the boring part. I mostly use the selecting tool to define all the areas, but for small stuff like these lines, I just use the brush and drew them in. And all of these colors are on extra layers. Although to save layers, I use this one for example for the guns and also the eyes and stuff like that. When it's far apart, you can use the same layer. And now, as I showed you earlier, we can choose a layer. In this case, it's the black areas from the costume. Add an extra layer, use the clipping mask, and then you can draw on the layer without touching any of the others. In this case, that would be a shading. Which brings us to the next step. Adding shadows to give our drawing a third dimension. Step 5. Adding shadows. For this step we want to produce a ground shadow over the whole costume. Therefore we choose our first layer. This one right here. Open up the selecting tool toolbar. Choose automatic. Use it on the background. Invert it. Now you can see the whole blue area is chosen. Then we open up a new layer and put it right above our closing section. But we don't want this to be a clipping mask. It's just a normal layer above the black and the red parts of the closing. Take the pencil, use the biggest airbrush one you can find. It's the first one. It says airbrush, big one. We choose total black for color. Make the brush quite big, that's where you can change the size of the brush, just like that. You can see it one to one right here, but we will choose a quite big one. But make it very translucent. And then we start at the bottom with a lot of pressure. And when we go up, we decrease the pressure. And then we have a nice shading, just like that. Reducing the brush size a bit for the arm. And do the same thing right here. More pressure and then whoop. And the same right here. Just a subliminal shading. Now I make it even more translucent and use a big brush for this area. Just a little bit. And here you can see already the light is coming from above, which means the bottom part of our character is a little bit darker than the upper part. Which means the base shadow is done, so we will start to define the smaller but stronger shadowed areas. Therefore we will use the good old selection tool again. Not the automatic one we just used, but the second one where you can define the lines by yourself. First, I want to do them on the black parts of the costume. So be extra careful to use the right layer. This is the one where we just did all the ground shadows and that's the one where we defined all the black parts from the costume. So we need the one above that and this one should be put to clipping mask, this one. We define an area like this rib like right here Choose the airbrush tool again. That's the area we want to shade. So I guess that's about the right brush size. It's still total black, but we will also make it very translucent. And now we put in our first shadow. Very gentle, decrease the pressure and voila. When removing the mask, we can see properly how the shadow looks. Now we want to shadow this rib right here. So again, using the selecting tool, Define the area, take my brush and again start dark at the bottom and get lighter towards the top. If you want to be able to erase something from this area after removing the mask, you would need to produce an extra layer for this one. Because when we remove the mask and then erase something from this one, I would also erase the shadow from this rib of course. So keep that in mind. But I'm pretty confident, so I will do all the shadow parts from the black area of the costume on one layer. There will be highlights later anyway, so I will not overthink this stage right now. 
Another thing that's very important to know is when you're using the selecting tool, you can add on as much as you like. So let's say right here, when you take a closer look, you can see I didn't get this area. So I can just add another one. And I have the whole area covered. Since our drawing is very well defined with all the strong blacks and hatching lines, it should be fairly simple to place all the shadows correctly. And of course you can also choose more surfaces at once and then color them with one stroke of the brush. And just like that we are done with all the shadows in the black areas. Now we move on to the next layer and we will take this one, the clipping mask layer right above the red tones. And for the color we will not just use the black we will use a very dark red. Then we are doing exactly the same thing like we just did and always thinking about where the light is coming from. The main light source is coming from this direction so this needs to be darker than here. But like I said before we already defined that very good with the cross hatching lines so that should be quite easy as well. The red suit parts are done as well and you can see it's getting together. Now I will do the same thing with the brown parts and later with the pistols. Here are my layers already and I'll do that real quick now. And so we have another step in the bank. All the shadows are where they belong. So now it's time for the highlights. Step 6. Adding highlights. For the highlights of the red part of the suit we will create an extra layer. This layer will be above the red suit shadow layer. And since we also will use clipping mask, it will clip to the second layer right there. The red base tones. We define an area we want to lighten up. And since we're using clipping mask, we don't have to worry about the side on the background because we will only draw on the red surface anyway. Choosing the brush again. And since the main light source will be white, I will just hold down my finger on a color I want to use with a brush. In this case, white. And now we go in with a very translucent white. And since I think this one is coming on too strong, I will erase it back with the eraser and soften it up a little. And now we will repeat this step everywhere where the light hits the muscles. Done with the red parts and now we will do this with all of the other areas as well. So again, open up the layer. Choose the one you want to color next. I want to color the black parts now. Add an extra layer and also do the clipping mask thing. Now I can go ahead and do all the highlights on the black part of the suit. With this step done, the drawing is starting to look decent. But now it's time to highlight all the veins and folds. I will do this on an extra layer above all the layers from the suit. Plus layer and here we go. No clipping mask this time, just using the selection toy and go nuts! And with the highlights done, it looks almost finished. But we want our character to pop out really great, so we will need a background. Step 7! Adding a background! For the background, we will just create an extra layer down at the bottom. So everything we will draw here, or just fill in, like the drag and drop method, will just be behind our character. When you do the background, make sure that the drawing is quite small on your screen, so you have an overall look of it. And for this background right here, I will just fool around with some of the really cool brushes here on Procreate. I will start off and mostly use this one, clouds in elements. I will start off with a white tone. And now I will stick to the same brush, but change the color. Like this, a little bit bigger maybe, looks a bit like an explosion inferno in the background. I love that. And it's going so fast, look at that. Now we go even way darker and add some more clouds. If you want to try out some stuff, just add an extra layer, just like that, and then you go over it, and if you don't like what you did, just Erase the layer, like that, and you're back to normal. We can even add some smoke to the guns. Looks pretty nice. 
What's also working pretty nice is when you choose the water, also in the elements. And if it's big enough and you don't overdo it, it looks like a flash, flashes. You see? Pretty cool. So, only one more thing to do. Step 8! Finishing! For finishing off, we will create an extra layer on top of everything. Which means everything we will draw here will be over every layer. Which is exactly what we want, because now we will use the lights right here. We can do a light flash like that. Let's try it out, maybe in the eye. Doesn't look too bad, but not the look I was going for. But I would like one of these in the at the guns. Let's check this out, maybe a little bit bigger even. That's kind of nice. And now we will use the lights again, but this one, the light pen. This one looks like that. So now we can paint with light and produce very nice highlights. They will even lighten up the line work, just like that. We will only use them where the light hits the character the most. Maybe another light flash and we're done. Deadpool in full colors. And I took the liberty to make it look like a cover. That would be nice enough for a comic book cover, don't you think? So we transform this into this. All of that we did with the iPad. Okay people, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope you have been able to learn a thing or two. If you did, a like rating is always appreciated, but most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification and turn it on all, so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you should be interested in how to actually draw Deadpool, then check out this video. That's where I show you how to draw this dude. Step by step, easy even for beginners, so see you there my friends. Click this right now.